wife, you just finished a concert yes. at Carnegie Hall. Yes. You want to talk about that? Sure. So I was playing with a very good colleague and friend of mine called Philippe Benjamin Scow, who's a violinist from Denmark. And we did a recording together about a year and a half, and this was sort of our big release concert. Um, and it was a little more stressful than we thought because um, he, being from Denmark, needed a visa to be here in the country and, um, and perform. And so he didn't get his visa until a day before the performance. So that was a lot of drama happening, <laughs> but he got it and we were just so over the moon that we were able to actually pull it off. How did he get notified that he got the visa? He got it from the Danish consulate in New York who was dealing with this. Um, they got a lot of extra lawyers on the case and everything just to you know help help the process. And he called me immediately and was like, we were both like screaming on the phone. <laughs> and I was just so happy because we weren't really sure what would happen if he weren't going to play. Um, obviously, it would be so sad if you weren't able to do the concert that we had planned together. Um, but we had other um, other thoughts, like maybe my brother could play if he could get the time off from the symphony. Maybe another Norwegian person in New York could play. So it was just a lot of different things that needed to come together. And I was just sad because I really wanted to play with Philippe. And then when he called me, it was just, I was so happy. <laughs> so you must have had lots of time to practice. Um... I did, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to play, <laughs> so, so because we weren't sure if he was going to get the visa, so if he weren't getting the visa, there would be a change in program, and then maybe I would play some of my solo pieces, and so it was just, I was like, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> we had played a lot of the pieces that we're playing together before, so it didn't take too long to put it together, because we only had two hours. You had two hours of rehearsal time. Yes. And then two hours in the hall. Yes. That was the rehearsal time, actually. So it were two hours rehearsals and then two hours concert. And then did they turn the lights on, get you out of there? Are they strict about that kind of thing? They are very strict. Um, they are very strict. We had a reception um, in the like, reception room next door afterwards. Um, and, you know, everybody was having a good time drinking champagne, um, but it was very strict with when we needed to get out of there. <laughs> yes, it's true. And so was it exciting to play there? It was very exciting. It was very, very exciting. It's such a, it's such a, an amazing place just to walk into, you know? And I used to live in New York, so I used to go to concerts there all the time. And this time, you know, I would go into the artist entrance in the back and see all those amazing photos of these artists that have played there over time. And it just, it was a very special feeling to be there um, and inspiring, actually, to be there um, and feel all of that um, magic in the walls of that beautiful, beautiful hall. So you had a leisurely, then overnight and a nice restful day in New York the next day? Uh, no. It was finishing concert at about 10, um, having some post-concert drinks with some of the audience members, go back to the hotel, wake up at 5.30 in the morning the next morning, and then fly straight to Florida for rehearsals for my next concert, which was the day after that. Um, so not a lot of uh, time to, uh, to relax, not too much downtime afterwards. And what did your colleague from Denmark do? Well, he had a couple of days afterwards. So he spent some time in New York and just met with some people and relaxed a little bit, I think. So he had a little bit more time, but I knew that I had planned it so that um, I would be able to do a concert in Florida um, and fly down the next day. So I knew that what I was getting myself into. And what kind of concert was it in Florida? It was a concert with ballet dancers, actually. Um, the four different ballet companies down in Jacksonville um, did um, some uh, pieces with um, the Carnival of the Animals that I was playing with my colleague uh, Elizabeth Pritchen and um, they did a dance to each animal so each dancer had like you know a lion came in and uh, and then had the 
um, the aquarium and they had masks on um, for each performance and um, it was it was actually really really fun. Um, I haven't seen that done for the carnival carnival of the animals before, so it's a great idea. We had a lot of fun. And how were the students prepared to deal with how you play the music? They um, had our recording that we had played before, so they kind of knew our tempies and everything, um, so that they had practiced uh, with that. And then we had a day of rehearsals. Um, and then dress rehearsal, and then the concert. And how was it laid out? Were you guys on stage with the dancers? Were you in the pit? Like... Yeah. <laughs> Looking up. <laughs> no, they were actually kind of dancing around the piano. So the piano was almost like the main, main attraction, and then the dancers were kind of dancing around it. So it was really nicely done. Um, really fun. I'd like to do it again. Were you ever a dancer? I actually... Uh, great question. Uh, I did dance when I was a kid. Um, I, my mom was actually a professional ballet dancer um, when she was younger, and she wanted me to, you know, try it out. I guess when I was a kid, so I did ballet dance uh, dancing lessons. Um, I didn't feel a huge pull toward it, so and I actually started doing more like hip hop dancing and a little more modern dancing. Um, and I did that until I was about 12 years old. Um, and then now I just dance for fun. Do you have something coming up soon? I'm doing the Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven at Swartz um, Center for Performing Arts. Uh, next, or this coming Sunday at um, 8 p.m. They're doing a Beethoven Sonata Thon, um, which is uh, all the Beethoven piano sonatas. Um, they have concerts this Sunday, 2 p.m., 5 p.m., and 8 p.m. and then next Sunday, 2 p.m., 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. And um, I got lucky to um, be able to play the Moonlight Sonata. It's one of my favorites, so I'm looking forward to it. I did hear a rumor about the possibility of you getting married. <laughs> yes, it is true. The rumors are true. Um, I'm getting married on July 1st in um, Norway, Oslo, Norway. And um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's something that obviously I haven't done before. <laughs> so, you know, I'm kind of I'm looking forward to it because it, it, I get to wear a really beautiful dress and I get to have a really nice dinner and I get to see all the people I love and I don't have to perform, which is like a miracle. <laughs> not that I don't like performing, but it's kind of nice to not have that pressure. And um, a lot of people ask me to, I'm going to be nervous, and I, I don't think I will. Um, and, and have you picked out your music? Um, no, <laughs> I haven't. I uh, I probably should get on that. Um, I've I've picked out some players, so I've you know gotten my brother to do something. He has agreed uh, very kindly, and um, I have a couple of things in mind um, that I'd like to have on there. Um, but I'm so lucky that I have so many amazing musician friends that are coming, and so um, I'm sure they can help me out. And there's one song that um, I want to have, um, but that's probably going to be more for the reception. And it's a French song, actually. It's by Joe Dassin. I don't speak French, so that probably sounded wrong, but I'll just go with it. Um, and it's uh, called Essie tu n'existe pas, and it's a, it's a really beautiful song um, that I didn't know about until I met my fiance Daniel. And um, he that was one of the first songs he ever like had me listen to, and he sings it sometimes for me, and it's like the best thing in the world. I love it. So we're probably going to be dancing to that. And I assume this is like in a church that you grew up in? Yes, so that's a great question. I We were kind of toying where, where we were going to have the wedding and if we're going to have it here or if we're going to have it in Norway. And um, and I just, you know, I'm from Norway. I love my country. I grew up there. I still see myself as a very Norwegian. And um, we decided on doing the, the ceremony at this really small, tiny church where I'm from. So I come from a very small area just outside Oslo called Nesseltangen. And we um, have this beautiful, beautiful church um, that's very, very old. And I've 
always just loved that church. So we're getting married there, and then our receptionist uh, at is this really nice hotel in, in Oslo. So we have that planned. Then, right after that, you have Kontiki? So right before that, I have Kontiki, and that runs from the, I think, 14th or 15th. Uh, maybe it's the 17th. It's end of, or mid to end of June. And I should probably know the dates of my own festival. <laughs> as long as I have uh, the repertoire sorted, I guess it's okay. Um, so we're doing that first. And then it makes sense for us to have the wedding afterwards because everyone's already going to be there. It's hard to get everyone together with our schedules. And um, we're going to um, have a week off and then do the wedding after that. So this year is actually our 10th year anniversary, which is crazy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's crazy to think that it's been that long. Um, but yeah, it's our, our 10th year. And so um, we're going to do mostly David and myself. Um, and then we have a lot of Norwegian artists uh, actually coming uh, this year because we wanted to keep it sort of um, like very like more nationalistic I guess uh, for this year just because it's the 10th anniversary so um, it's it's going to be mostly my brother and I and then we have some other artists coming too. Other international schedule for the summer? Yes um, so I have a couple co concerts in the UK um, in at the beginning of August and then I have I'm actually playing here in Atlanta for the Atlanta um, uh, music Academy. They have a two-week um, festival, and I'm um, gonna play with them for the first time, which is gonna be fun. I'm doing some in Highlands, um, Highlands Music Festival, um, and then I have a concert in Paris um, before, actually between Antiki and the wedding, um, and then um, just concerts here and there, you know. And you're still teaching at Kennesaw. Yes, I do. I do still teach at Kennesaw. I'm there three times a week now. And um, it's because it's I, I teach a lot of chamber music and it's hard to get six people together in the same room at the same time. Um, and I absolutely love teaching chamber music. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. And you also teach piano. I do. I teach piano and I also teach um, keyboard skills which um, is in a classroom, and it varies how many people are in class. Last year I had over 30, this year I have about 10, um, and that's like a piano lab, and um, it used, keyboard skills used to be one of my worst enemies when I was in college. I um, hated pretty much every second that I spent in that class, um, and he used to make us do score reading and transpose from symphonies and have just really, really difficult things um, in class that we had to do for, you know, I was there for almost six years. And after a while, I, I learned a lot. And it was funny when Kennesaw asked me if I could teach keyboard skills because, you know, I had all these bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not making my students transpose any Brahms symphonies anytime soon, so. Any changes in your career path? No, not immediately. Um, I love what I do. I do so many different things. Um, it's, I'm so lucky and fortunate to be able to just dip my foot into different things, you know. I, all connected by music, of course. Um, I love my private students. I love teaching at Kennesaw. I love being a you know university professor. I uh, love being a, a soloist. I love being a chamber musician. I just recently started um, picking up pianos for organizations or people that need them. Um, I've been up to Steinway Factory a few times picking up pianos from there, which is amazingly fun. Um, I. I just, I love everything that I get to do. I'm so, I'm so fortunate. Um, I also just became um, one of Steinway's top teachers. I got that award last year for 2019, and that's inspiring to, you know, do even better. Um, and so I, I love what I do, and I just want to keep doing it.